guys, this is the AC Service Tech. Today what we're looking at is checking the superheat all right, on a 410A system. So if you see something that looks like this in the front of your evaporator coil or in the inside of your evaporator coil, then that would mean that you have a piston, okay? Versus if you had a thermostatic expansion valve that looked like this, if you had a TXV that looked like this, then you would be charging in subcoin taken on this gauge. But since we have a piston on this system, all right, then you would check it with with the blue side. All right, that is a low pressure. Now most uh, 410A systems that are residential um, split systems, a lot of them are going to have TXVs. All right, just due to the energy efficiency of them. All right. Um, but you still find ones that have pistons out there, and you find a lot that have pistons that are R22 uh, and some capillary tube systems that are still out there. But anyway, so what we're going to be looking at today is superheat. All right, so uh, what we want to first determine, this is 410A system. You can find that on the rating plate, all right? Uh, you can also find it on the compressor, and then you're going to look for um, the piston, all right? So since we already know we're checking for superheat here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to find the pressure, which it, each of these increments are 5 PSIG, and you're going to come over to 100, <clears throat> 114 PSIG, and you're going to follow that in to uh, right about 38 degrees, all right? 38 degrees, saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil, all right? And then we have our temp. Uh, sensor mounted on the vapor line, which is a large line within three inches of the service port where we have the blue hose attached to it. All right, so in this case, our target, we've already figured out due to the wet bulb inside the building and the outdoor temp, that our target superheat is actually 16 degrees of superheat, okay? So what that means is the temperature increase from here to the actual, okay? So to find superheat, you take the actual minus the saturated. All right, so in this case, if our target is 16 and we have an, a temperature on the vapor line, it's, this temp sensor is actually electrical taped on there, and then we have insulation over top of that just to make sure that the heat uh, and the sun aren't shining on it, all right, to give us an inaccurate temperature reading. But we got 65 minus 38, okay? And what that leaves us with is 27 degrees of superheat, and our target is 16. So what that means is that we need to add refrigerant to the system if this is the first time you know you're you're starting checking the system. You know you just installed it. You're adding extra length with the line set more than what the manufacturer has given you a worth of refrigerant in the system already. All right. So if it's at 27 degrees of superheat which is the temperature increase from here to here from the middle of the evaporator coil until where you read it three inches away from the service port that's called the total superheat and that's how we charge units all right uh, then you're going to need to add refrigerant and what that does is as you add refrigerant this pressure will increase this temperature will increase all right and this temperature will fall okay so it will close the gap all right so that's how that's done all right, so let's, uh, let's look at another scenario. All right, this is R410A refrigerant superheat. All right, so when you have superheat, you need to check it with the vapor gauge. All right, you know you have to check the system's charge in superheat because we have a piston or an orifice or a capillary tube. All right, our target superheat is 16 degrees of superheat. All right, in this case, uh, what we have, we found the superheat just by the wet bulb inside and the outdoor temperature outside. Our target 16 degrees of superheat. What we have is we have on our vapor gauge 124 PSIG. And we follow that into the pink saturated temperature ring in the middle of the evaporator coil. And we are looking at 43 degrees, okay, saturated temperature. We have the actual temperature right here on our vapor line of roughly 50 degrees. Okay, so you take 50 degrees minus uh, 43 degrees and you have 7 degrees of superheat. Alright, if you have too little superheat, if you only have too little, 
And what you need to do is you actually need to pull refrigerant out, okay? Uh, so you are going to actually have to um, pull, pull it out into your recovery bottle, okay? Recover it. Uh, if you have too much superheat compared to your target superheat, that, need, that means that you need to add refrigerant. But if you have too little actual superheat, whereas we have 50, 50 degrees minus 43 degrees, that only leaves us with 7 degrees of superheat with a target of 16, then we need to recover refrigerant until we have a uh, temperature difference of 16 degrees. All right, anywhere from, say, 15 to 17 degrees. You really want to have it pretty close with superheat. Um, you know, one to two degrees away from your target superheat. All right? But that's how you do it. Um, you know, you don't have to pull out a crazy amount. You know, just pull out maybe an ounce or two at a time, okay? Um, but you don't have to pull out a crazy amount in order to do this, all right? So you may only be a few ounces away. All right, but an overcharge, what's going to happen with that is if you have too much um, saturated state, basically, uh, and uh, in, your, in your evaporator quill, if you have too much saturated state in your evaporator quill and you have too little superheat, then what that means is you potentially could be putting liquid into the compressor outside. So not only are you overcharged and you have a higher head pressure than you need, you know, in a higher compression ratio, which means you're, you're less energy efficient. The other issue, which is even a bigger issue, is if you have too little superheat, then that means that you could be taking liquid um, into the inlet of the vapor compressor, and that's, that's going to just basically kill the vapor compressor. All right, so you've got to make sure that you have a superheated vapor inside of your evaporator quill and going back to the compressor outside. All right, but that's that. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time. AC Service Tech Channel.